Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Lamari, and I am the Senior Director of Community Engagement at the Decentralized Identity Foundation. Today, we are being joined for our member spotlight by Ivan Bassart, who is the co-founder and CTO of a digital services company called Validated ID, which is based in Spain. So welcome, Ivan. It's really great to have you here today. Thank you. Very happy to be here with you. So Validated ID, they have been longstanding associate members at DIFF. So we're here today to ask them a few questions, get to know the company, the story, and more about the services that they're offering. Um, so Ivan, I always like to start out my first question with getting a sense of the story of not just your company, but also you yourself, how you came to decentralized identity. I, I feel like everyone has a really great story that's very intriguing. So I'd like to hear yours. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. Okay, sure. Actually, my story is it's quite connected also with the validated story. But um, I mean, I've been around of digital identity and digital signature and cryptography space for almost 25 years. So I feel old when I say that statement, but that's the reality. It's, be, it's been a long time. And well, I've been involved in different companies and, and different projects. And, uh, and uh, that, that also was interesting because I've seen the evolution of, of this space of digital identity during those years. Um, and for me, it was interesting when the SSI appeared because the thing is, I've been involved in many projects where actually were a completely failure in terms of adoption. So mainly working on digital certificates that, you know, many in Europe, in many countries. So we have digital certificates or national IDs, these kind of things. So, so in that sense, most of the projects that uh, were happening on the beginnings of the, of the century and uh, 2010, all these years, so most of them were, were very bad in terms of, of adoptions. And that was also one of the reasons where, where when we created Validate ID. So actually I'm saying that in my case, what I'm trying to do in this company is cleaning my karma. So after working in a lot of projects that not many people was using, so being able to run in, into a company services that although were secure, also were also quite usable and thinking about the user, the user experience. And actually, when we created Validated ID, so if you think about the name, so we had in mind mainly things about having identity validations, right? So things about, like the, the definitions or the problems that is trying to solve the SSI. But at that time, that was in 2012, so more than 11 years ago, so actually the identity landscape was completely different. So, I mean, we were already thinking on those things, on how connecting attributes and identities but really the technology was not there. So that's why when we started the company, the, the main business, the, the, the first business we started was about digital signatures, which was actually what was very hot at that time. And it's actually our, our main business, digital signatures. So we met our journey on Valet ID. So working on digital signatures, digital certificates. So, so we are a trust service provider, which is something regulated in Europe. But when then with the blockchain space, all this thing of the decentralized identity appeared. So it really took completely our attention because it was actually the initial goal of the company, but actually we were a little bit sooner that, uh, that the, the market was, was in there. So, so we started working on that on the very beginning. Actually, we are, we are funding members of the, of the DIF. So we are from there on the very beginning. And then we start, I mean, first, first, even before the DIF, we were on the rebooting web of trust. We were also part of the Sovereign Foundation. So we were actually in a lot of the initiatives that were happening at the very beginning on the SSI space. And, and in that sense, when the div was created, so, so we were really very interested in being part of there because it was one of the main thing tanks that helped it to, to, to settle down the, all these things. So that was a little bit briefly my story and Valiet that is story, right? So, so we really had this, this idea in time, even before the SSI existed, right? But uh, but yeah, I mean, sometimes things happen like that, right? So you have an idea, but you need to wait till really the market and the mass is, is there in order to, to be happened. So that, that was how it was in our case. That's fantastic. And maybe you can share an overview of validated IDs services, because I went to the website and you are intersecting a lot of industries uh, with your various products. And can you give us a sense of how you brought SSI to those various products and 
to some of those industries? Mm -hmm. Sure. So actually, as I said, so Valetd is a what is called, let's say in Europe, is regulated a trust service provider. So it's we are offering services ab about trust, right? And this is this is regulated here in Europe. So we have a regulation which is called EIDAS, which regulates the digital signature and digital identities, which now is under revision and the new revision of EIDAS, as everybody probably that is listening will know, it's it's talking about wallet and things like that. But um, as I said, we are here before the, all that from 2012. So in that sense, we are offering this kind of services to the market. So our main service is about digital signatures. So in different flavors or with different technologies from using biometrics, from using certificates, from remote signatures, face-to-face, uh, -face, all, all this kind of stuff. So this is our main, our main service, which is also combined with issuing certificates and, and, and things like that, right? So this is our main service, but from uh, since 2017, we start working on, on SSI. And in that sense, those are services that are in a very different maturity level in Valid ID, I think in general, right? So digital signature is a very mature service, although SSI is a more early stage. But what we are trying to do is that this new service of SSI is part of our portfolio of services of a trust service provider. So it's not something isolated that is in there, but it's connected with the existing services about trust that we're already offering. So that for instance, if you need to make a digital signature, that you may be able to use a wallet to prove your identity in uh, in the process of, of making a signature and proving who you are, right? Or if that you go into a facility to a face-to-face -face process where you make a signature, that this process of face-to-face -face validation could be useful in order to create an attribute into a wallet. So we are trying to, to connect the ecosystem of services so that SSI is kind of a new service that can be integrated in the portfolio of the services um, about trust. Because we think that SSI and the wallet, let's say, could be very disrupting on the existing services now about trust. Because mainly the, the problems that we have about trust, and I take digital signature because it's our main service, mainly when you have a digital signature, what you need to do is to two things mainly. So uh, to prove uh, that you are, are okay with the consent or give consent of a specific document, and then to prove your identity. And the way that you are proving our identity nowadays is sometimes very uh, or complex using certificates or very weak using like, let's say DocuSign uh, style proof of uh, identity, which mainly only prove that you have access into an email account and click okay, right? So when you will be able to have a wallet, right? In order to prove your identity and not just your identity, but an extended version of your identity. So certain attributes that you work for a company that you are over 18, these kind of things. This we think that can be very disrupting in uh, in this space. So that's why we think that the SSI service will be part of the ecosystem of services that we have and the evolution of the system and services that we are offering currently to the market. Mm. Well, that's really fascinating. And I think it's a good segue into my next question, which is about uh, one of the projects that Validated ID has been a part of recently, which was in collaboration with Sidor to bring verifiable credentials to five universities in Catalonia. So I'd like to hear more about that and our audience, I'm sure will be very interested to hear about that project and, and where things are with that. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a very interesting project. It's called Camins, which in Catalan, it's in Catalan words, so it means paths, right? So this project um, is what you say, is about delivering an SSI platform ecosystem in order to, to let those universities to issue credentials to both students, but also teachers, in order to uh, be able to um, get into the university campus, virtual campus, or to get diplomas, things like that, right? So one important thing here is that this project is very connected with the EBSI uh, project. So EBSI uh, is the the European Communion project about SSI. So it is a ledger, but it's more than that. So it's really some specifications, definitions of uh, credentials and so on. So this project is very connected to that. So those universities have been working within the EBSI project for years, right? And now what they would like to do is taking, you know, the knowledge and experience on that and deploying uh, a platform which is compliant with EBSI and is able to deliver 
those use cases to, to, to the citizens. So we are providing the technology here. So Sador uh, is also as our partner here. So it's, they are making more the, the work of, of managing the project itself. And as Validate ID, what we are providing is the technology and the SSI expertise in order to be able to create this platform, to custom the platform, to get it integrated with the VSI and, and to put it in place uh, for, for the deployment. Here, the time frame is that soon, I think at the, at the end of the, this year, beginning next year, will be a first version deployed, right? And with that, they will make first internal use cases in order to test it and so on. But they, the final goal is really to use that for the deployment of all the citizens of all those five universities in Catalonia in order to, to get uh, also the ability to change credentials from university to university, right? So that if I have a credential or a diploma of a university, I can exchange that information to another university. And the good thing here of using EBSI is that some of the credentials of the data structure of the credentials is already defined. So there is a, a, an interoperability already defined at different levels, at, at the protocols, but also at the semantics, at syntactics, and so on. So I think it's it's a very nice use case and a very nice project because it's 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 a way of proving that these things of SSI is not just something theoretical, but we are really at a point that where we can deploy those kind of projects on a on a real on, on real water. So. That's great. I love hearing about real world use cases, and in this instance, something that's going to make life easier for students. And so thank you so much for sharing that. Um, also, I know that Validated ID being a founding member of DIFF, you've been involved with some of the work early on. And our audience would also be curious to hear some of the value that you've gotten out of DIFF. And maybe you can share about work items that have been of value to you in your work at Validated ID. Um, or even work items that you're looking at, you're watching and are of interest uh, for the future. Yeah. So, well, as I said, I think um, at the very beginning, uh, we were part of the DIF. And I think DIF, it's being a very relevant think tank on defining um, all the main standards on, on, on SSI. So in that sense, from, from the very beginning, it was very useful. So all the building blocks, you know, as SSI from the DAD, so all that, that that stuff, I think it was very helpful to us to, to get all the DIF, uh, DIF um, work in order to, to use it in our in our platform. Um, very specifically, I think we were very interested at, at some point, I think it was like two years ago, on the confidential storage uh, working group. Um, well, confidential storage have changed it from names a lot of times, personal storage, confidential storage, I think identity hub. So, but I like confidential storage particularly, but uh, I know there are different names for the same. So we we, we had internally like an R&D project about uh, how to implement that in our wallet. And I think it was very interesting for us in order to, to have a wallet, which has certain abilities to store information in a way which is uh, really more scalable, having in mind things like backup stores. So um, that was very useful for us. And, but also to be to be honest and transparent, I think now we are less, I mean, we are of course following what DIF is doing, but now as we are a, a European TSP, now we have more the focus on what's happening on the European Commission, uh, let's say, let's say steps. So here, for instance, we have all the architectural reference framework, which is defining a set of standards that all the European wallets um, must fulfill, all these kind of things. I think now, in general, my opinion is that we are we are moving in in a sense that uh, it's getting into a more formal state. All the SSI thing, so that means that also regarding to the standardization, we are moving also into a more formal basis. So I think at at some point here, probably in Europe will be involved uh, um, certification or organizations of our standardization like Oasis, like Etsy, like ANSI. So at some point also that will be will be involved. But it's true that nowadays, for instance, the things that are on the ARF are taking from the work that has been done on the DIF. So I think that it's, it's not that we are reinventing the wheel. So that the thing is that the, the, the work that has been done on the DIF, now it's in the process to be 
more formalized into different places, also in W3C and things like that. So in that sense, now we are not so much involved directly on the DIF, but more on the things that are happening in Europe, which are more on these formal processes, right? But um, but in any case, as I said, I think uh, DIF has been a, a very relevant think tank. It is still a very relevant think tank, but now there are also other places which are uh, um, taking care of, of this standardization. And we as a European DSP are a little bit more focused now on, on, on them, right? But in the past, for sure, all the building blocks of SSI and specifically the confidential storage has been very interesting and very helpful in, in the development of our technology and in our business, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and I think you touched upon an important point, which is that DIFF is a place to incubate specifications quickly. It's a place where people can collaborate and come together We under IPR protection. And many of those work items go to official standards bodies where it makes sense. So we do have an ongoing hackathon and it would be interesting to see what comes out of that as well. New, yep. new work items uh, that can come out of diff, new collaborators, uh, new members into the community. Um, so another, one more thing I wanted to ask, and I, it touches upon, you touched upon it earlier, but I'm curious to hear more about your user adoption journey. So I know everyone has challenges with interoperability that they've overcome in bringing their products to market. So I'd like to hear more about that. Can you share a little bit about that journey? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a very uh, key point in, in SSI, no? So, so the adoption and the deployment into, into, into real projects. Regarding the interoperability, I really think that we've done like a very big step forward in the last maybe six months or, or one year. Um, so as I said, for instance, we, 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 we have been very involved on the EBSI project here in Europe as Europeans. So actually we were, we were the first ones to pass the wallet conformance testing of EBSI. Right now, there's many people in there. So for us, interoperability is something really, really key and really, really, really relevant. But I think even if ESI compatibility, interoperability, the very beginning was, was very limited. So it was very complicated to uh, imagine that different wallet providers can interact so that there was one issuer and a wallet was from another provider. So that was, was very limited. I think it was very interesting some of the work done on the on the plug phase of W3C, we participated on, on different versions on the plug phase interoperability of W3C, where different standards were used in there, OpenID, but also DITCOM, some of them. We are using more, or I mean, putting more energy on OpenID because it's the one that has been adopted here in, in Europe, but in there, there were others. And that was very interesting because we did really interoperability cases with different providers, so that some one provider can issue a credential, we can receive a credential on the other way around. We've been working with people in the in the space very known, like uh, people from the Nube or Walt ID or um, or Velocity, so people which is on the on the on the DIF. That was a very cool collaboration, and we also participated in, in some interoperability projects. For instance, we work on a project called Blink Project, which was uh, promoted by the Howard University in Belgium where we collaborated with the people of uh, Walt ID in that case. And it was a project about issuing credentials of, uh, of energy efficiency, right? And, and there, one of the ideas was to test interoperability. So there were like these two wallet providers and one of them, in that case, Walt ID was issuing the credentials and we were receiving the credentials into a wallet. So that was a, a very interesting uh, interoperability test. But, Having that said, we are in the process to delivering that into real users. And I think everybody is in that process, right? So we need to, okay, one thing is testing that in the lab environment, but I think it's now we are in the process to testing it on the, on the real users. And in that sense, we have also found that when proving that the wallet on, on real users, there are some user experience things that really need to be, uh, I mean, rethink or, or improve, right? Because... When you give a wallet, which normally is done by tech people, for tech people, to a normal user and see something like DID, right? Or do you like to share your DID? So some people say, what are you asking me for, right? So I don't understand. So in that sense, we've done this kind of test and, and we've done a new version of the wallet with really a new user experience after the learning we've done with real users of what's working and what's not working. And we start having certain use cases 
of people using the wallet uh, nowadays. I, I, there is one that I like a lot to explain, which is within a hospital in, in, in Spain, in Madrid, which is called Centro. And they are using the wallet to give access to the facilities to the patients, right? So they are issuing uh, credentials into the wallet for the patients, so kind of a patient ID credential. And, and then the patient will goes to the hospital and have uh, an appointment with a certain doctor instead of going to reception and asking where I need to go and prove your identity and these kind of things. So they have like a like a screen that says, okay, authenticate with your wallet. They scan a QR with the wallet. They prove their identity. The system identifies them. Say, okay, you need to go to the door number eight and automatically opens the door, right? So it's very cool because, you know, it's a use case where they're using this wallet into a real use case integrated with, a, you know, a, an access control with the back end of the system. So these kind of things. And now we're in the process to replicate this kind of, uh, of uh, user experience with different type of entities. So one of the good things that we have as a TSP is that we already have more than 3000 customers from local governments to hospitals to different companies that are already using our services of digital signatures. And now what we're trying to do is to identify use cases where we can, you know, um, uh, go together with this, those companies to, to test the wallet and start looking at these problems of, of user adoption. And I think it's not just us. I, I have the feeling that everybody now is in this process of, okay, let's try now to make, you know, real use cases with the wallet and see what's working, what's not working, what can be understood uh, and not. And my forecast is that in 2024 will be still a lot of work to do in, in that topic. So I think that there is still a lot of room uh, to improve the user experience and the adoption and so on. But we are just in the process. And I think it's very exciting because it's when you see, you know, all the work you have been doing all those years, which was more technical and abstract, to put it in something that really is delivered to a final user. So I think it, it, it's very nice to see this this process and this, this evolution. So we are on it, yeah. That's fantastic. And it's exciting to see that journey from all of the technical work to user adoption. So thank you yeah. for sharing about that whole evolution. Um, so lastly, I'd like to ask about parting thoughts from you regarding the future of validated ID. What's your vision of how validated ID will change the way we do things? So thinking how, I mean, it's, uh, we already touched that a little bit in, in, in the previous questions, but the thing is, so our, our main role is a uh, deliver trust. So we are trust service providers. So we are not a technological provider it's per, per se, right? So we are delivering trust. So the thing, is what what we are trying to do is to be able to use like the SSI paradigm or the wallet and all that's around the wallet as a tool in order to improve something which is not yet solved, which is the management of the digital identities or our identities on the, our own life lives, right? So we know that here in Europe, of course, there will be uh, a lot of room that will be taken by the by the countries because they will issue probably what well, the idea is that. Every country will will issue a wallet for all citizens with your passport and your driver's license and so on. But this will not cover many other types of credentials which are out of the scope of the governmental attributes. So that you are, for instance, an employee of Valid ID, or that you are the member of the Fabul Club Barcelona, or all this kind of thing, right? So giving this kind of services to entities that may have the need to issue attributes to the users or entities that may need to interact with wallets, which may be complex because there will be different wallets with different kinds of attributes from different sources. So here the trust frameworks are very relevant. So this is the value that we are trying to deliver, right? So to be a facilitator in order to, 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 to project all the work that we have been doing and that Europe is doing into real services of the, of the users. And our forecast more or less is that um, probably during next year, we will be involved mainly in projects like Camins. Now we are, uh, I mean, trying to close another project, a similar project with other universities in, in Spain. Um, but we will be probably involved in those kind of projects probably next year, but also 
in the projects that I explained that like this hospital in Madrid. So we are trying next year to replicate that in more entities to see more real use cases. So the idea is to convert step-by-step step those projects, some of them more strategic, some of them more uh, tactical into uh, more services, which are more um, replicable, right? So that at the very end, it's gonna be like the digital signature service, uh, which is something which is more like a box where you can deliver and it's more like that. But I think that's something that will take next year and probably part of the 2025. It is very related also with the time frame of the European Commission. We are also participating on some of the landscape pilots that are happening in, in Europe, where those things are defined and implemented and so on. So I think probably next year and uh, 2025 will be in that process, right? So into you know uh, converting this project and this product into something more, um, more let's say closed and more service-like as we do as a, as a digital service. And this is a little bit our our strategy. So, so um, having this role of trust service provider and using this new paradigm in order to enlarge the abilities of on the services that we can deploy in order to help solving something which is still not solved, which is what I mentioned. This how to manage our digital identities nowadays in our in our life, right? So that, that that's a little bit our our name is what is about validity ID again, right? But the thing is that when we created the company, it was very soon for doing that. But I think now we have the opportunity to 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 really make a, a big um, a big step in, into that direction to solving the the problem of digital identities of the citizens in general. I'm I'm explaining about Europe because we are in Europe, but actually this problem is worldwide. Actually, in the states, I think it's even even worse because uh, here in Europe we have like more. Uh, strong identities provided by the governments, but in some other regions of the world, is not like that. And in those places, having you know the ability of services to to solve that problem, it's probably even more valuable, right? So it's it's sometimes I'm explaining about Europe, but actually I think it's something that um, will happen worldwide, not just in Europe. Mm -hmm. Fantastic! Thank you so much for sharing all of that and giving us an overview of not only validated ID, but also the landscape in Europe and how your work is intersecting all of that. Also, for anyone who's watching today, if you're interested in learning more about validated ID, I will put in the video description uh, the link to their website and resources to get to know more about what they're doing. But once again, thank you so much, Ivan. It's been a pleasure to have you um, here join me uh, to join me today for this interview. And we'll have this uh, available for our audience and for our community. And we look forward to seeing you at the various events uh, among the SSI world. So thank you once again. My pleasure. Thanks uh, to you and the DAF for having the opportunity to, to explain our journey here on this little talk. Mm. Thank you very much.